Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Whiskey Sour Libations of Conversations. It's your girl Dom, aka St. Angeles, aka Pretty Sididi on Twitter. I got all these different, listen, sometimes you just got to have different aliases because you know the fans be watching, okay? We gonna, you know, get into it this morning, but first we have some church announcements, okay? Don't forget to buy your candles. There's some of y'all out there that's re-upping. You know, I've been busy packaging and sending stuff, but uh, it's still in there. We fully stocked. So what gives? What's up? Um, but that's all I have for the moment. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, and share the podcast. Um, tell a friend to tell a friend to cash at me. It's right there. <laughs> so I can spend a couple of thousands on my titties and my ass cheeks like the city girls. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, let's just get right into the show this morning. It is this morning over here. It's it's eight o'clock and I'm up on a Sunday super early. This person coming into the neighborhood as a Grammy Award winning singer, songwriter, he was my confidant when I was at Webster University. He is everything to me. He is a light. He is a beam. He is the foundation. Please welcome Curtis CJ Conrad to the stage. You better speak some of that shit into existence. I'm like, Grammy Award winning, win. win. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we all about manifesting, pouring into others as we pour into ourselves. Okay. I feel that. <laughs> I'll take it. Listen, <laughs> the price yesterday is not the price today. Amen. Okay. I heard you saying return to the Mac, and I'm like, well, where the clip? Uh, we ain't got nothing. <laughs> we 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 go wild at at, at the winery when when we, when we do because because we just do a party so we we just like what would make these folks turn up and y'all Curtis has an amazing voice I, I just you you see how he speaks so like it's very like sexy and oh. chocolatey so imagine his singing voice you know what I mean like it's I amazing. Mean... We make it do what it do, you know what I'm saying? This is also that that morning gravel, too, because, you know, um, I'm really where, you, up. Where, where did you sing? You, well, well, okay, first of all, what winery? What are you talking about? Oh, St. Louis, the winery. See, not in St. Louis. We we oh. drive about an hour out to, like, uh, Augusta. It's called Montel Winery. Is it Augusta, Missouri? Yup. Is that new? Um, no, it's it's been there for a minute. It's really starting to blow up, though, recently. Like, um, some company came in and started buying... A lot of the property, and they're really trying to make it like a travel destination. Okay. So, yeah, it's 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 a it's a cool drive. People keep going. It's an hour out, but for real, it's like it's almost a straight shot, and it's and it's so beautiful to drive through. And once you die, just just prepare to buy some liquor and have some fun. That that's really it. Oh my gosh, that sounds so exciting! It's it's so much that has changed in the short but long twelve years that I've been gone. Has it really been 12 years? Wow. Yes, yes, it's really been 12 years. Yeah. I've been seeing you maybe once since you moved to LA. Yeah, we went to First Watch. Yep. But it's like weird because we keep up with each other, comment on stuff on Instagram. So it really feels like that's the amazing thing about social media. You feel like you never lose contact because mm -hmm. things just didn't exist. And I would just like be like, what is Curtis up to? Like, what, what has happened since we've all left Webster? Since, you know, it, it, and I, I am grateful for it, you know. Oh, definitely. Parts yeah. of mm -hmm. I, I can say that. Like, in some ways, I feel like I've, I've gotten closer to some people. Yeah. Thanks to, to social media and being able to talk like this. Because I'm like, like, like even uh, Anna, like, I, I promise you, that girl was quiet as a mouse when we was at Webster. And now I feel like I know her. I've seen her grow as a woman. And I know we're not here to talk about her. But it's like, it's oh. so dope to be able. Anastasia. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. See, I, you are absolutely correct. She was on the show. She and mm -hmm. uh, Alex and mm -hmm. you, you really, you both of them because uh, Anna's sister is more outgoing and exactly. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get epiphany on cause she, I mean, <laughs> I 
I could imagine. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, but it's so dope to like to just watch everybody like come into their own. Yeah. And I'm watching you come into your own. I'm like, okay, entrepreneur. Okay, um, little um online personality. I said, I see you. You know, we're trying to flourish in these streets and make it do what it do. You and look like you're doing. Well, thank you. I've had a lot of inspiration and support. Um you know, like from my, my friends out here and just pushing forward, getting out of my head, which is very hard to do, but you know, mm -hmm. it's taking a bit of time. So, uh, Curtis, Curtis, how did we meet? Like, I, I, I always try to think about where was, I just feel like you showed up one day. I feel, but well, I don't think that's true. No, I'm like, well, I mean, I was at Webster, you was at Webster. I feel, I'm trying to remember, was I a student still or was I working? By the time you you got there, well, I know shame. I know shame alone. So, so you I'm, ended up taking Shay's place. Right. So that means us. we were both students then. That means we were both just kicking it in the multicultural center <laughs> the, when, when you met me, probably. And then yeah, after Shay left, I actually took her her position as an interim, and that's when I that's when I, I I feel like we really got to know each other because you days, um, who else? Y'all were making a. Antoinette, Nolly, I will make it a point to come in my office every Monday. Like, let me tell you the tea. Let me tell you exactly what happened. Let me tell you who got too drunk. Let me tell you who, who <laughs> dipped off. And I'll be like, oh, okay, well, I got time. Come on. Let's... I would prefer to be in your office than class. That, well, and I, I, I remember when Dream Girls came out and we would always go, but Curtis said it's best for the group. <laughs> Y'all wore me down with that. I swear. <laughs> you wore me down. <laughs> Oh man, good times. You know, it's it's funny how people come into your life, and you know, we always think sometimes people have seasons, and we have we're now on season twenty two. <laughs> you know, and so much is happening between that time. So so much growth. We've all gone through our um, different trials and tribulations, things that have made us really show up for ourselves and for other people. And I want to talk about, you know, our journeys and your journey to that space um, and being able to be more open about um, your mental health. Um, are we no, Are we still in mental health month? Awareness? I think that was last month, but yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, but definitely. being able to be more vocal about it because I feel like that's something I've seen recently with you speaking about your journey to therapy, really working on yourself and really, you know, like boundaries, all that stuff, things that we put in place to really protect ourselves as well. So let's start there. What made you or, or, or led you to therapy? You know, honestly, if we're going to be real honest, I really started back at Webster when I was a student. Um, like my first venture into it, my grandmother had passed over one, a spring break. Like literally she uh, went into the hospital when, at the beginning of the spring break and by the end of it, she had passed. Mm -hmm. And I, we buried her and everything, and I didn't. I didn't even say a word to nobody. Nobody at Webster knew. Like I didn't even. I didn't want. Was gonna say, "Hey guys, I was just reading break." Well, my grandma died, but you know, right. I, I just, I just didn't feel like doing it, so I just, I didn't say nothing, and I just tried to live with it. And and in the process of that, it was, you know, it it was. I I felt myself going downhill, I, and it got to the point where I wasn't even trying to leave the house anymore. I was like, I can't. My mom was like, "You gotta do something." Yeah. She's like, it, I don't know what, but you got to do something. And so I, I signed up. And actually, that was a good thing about going to Webster is that there was actually counseling on campus that was free for us. So mm -hmm. I started then, actually. I started going, and that's when and that's when I started to see the effectiveness of it. I, I could go, okay, if nothing else, this is a space where I know I can talk about stuff um, and not really feel judged and not and, and it not go outside of this room. You know what I mean? And sometimes yeah. that's, that's all you you, you kind of need, at least it, it, in the moment. Like that's yeah. that's all you need. Um, and that was like I said, that was, that was my first um, attempt at it. And then after school, life be life, and, and <laughs> uh, it just it just it just became a lot. And you know, 
I, I'll be honest, depression is, dep- is something I've I, I've dealt with, and sometimes I'll say I'm still dealing with. I feel like I'm just I'm just high high functioning now, mm. um, but um, at one point it was becoming a bit too much, so I I looked for a therapist um, as an adult. Well, when I say I was an adult when I was at Webster, but when I was done with Webster, <laughs> um, I know what you mean. yeah, um, I had and and that's a, a struggle in and of itself. People don't talk about that when they say go to therapy, go to therapy. It's like, do you know how hard it is to find a therapist? Mm-hmm. To find a therapist who's available, because I know when I was looking, people would be like, um, yeah, you can start in like three months, and it's like, girl, I'm going through now. What are you saying? Right. And it's like you, you, you. Either accept, I mean, there, there are other things you can do, like you can like, uh, admit yourself into a hospital if you really feel that bad, or you can just wait it out. And that's what I ended up doing. And I'm, and I'm still glad that I was patient enough to wait it out because when I finally found a therapist that I liked, it was like she made so much stuff make sense for me that it was like, okay, I've been framing all this stuff wrong. And once I did that, it was, it was just like, it just started feeling like things started falling into place. Stuff started making sense. You know, and I'm not saying it, it, it doesn't require work. It doesn't require introspection, but it do. Uh, but it started doing stuff for me. I was like, okay, I, yeah, I, I'll schedule another appointment. I'll, yep, schedule me for the next, yep, next two weeks, schedule me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you think that, were you, were you able to kind of be like vocal, more vocal about that in your adult years and being able to like, Tell your, you know, like tell your friends about it. Like, were your friends like, "Hey, like Curtis, like I'm not seeing you as your normal self." Like, were they noticing things as well, or were you just still kind of like bottling uh, what you were feeling up? Well, um, I feel like I'm I'm really good at like masking a lot of stuff, but there, I do people who know me well can say, oh, "Wait a minute, something yeah. right, something right," and so. I've had a few people, like going back to when we were in college, a few people would be like, "What's? Are you okay?" Like Colette, who later became my, my boss, she was real good at catching me. Like, "What are? You, what's going on?" Okay, you know. So, yeah, there, 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 there were a handful of people who could see it, but for the most part, I mean, and that's I think the 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 plight of the black man, the plight of black people in general is we're, we're told you just got to be strong. Mm-hmm. Can know, we just stay here on this strong? Or Let's go. Mm-hmm. One day, one of my girlfriends said that to me, and it's just mm-hmm. like, well, I think that you're so strong. And I'm, I was like, bitch, I want to be, <laughs> you know, like, and I don't always, I don't like it here because mm-hmm. there's a lot of weight to carry. A lot of people also, I'm like you, I try to mask certain things or I won't say certain things, but then I find mm-hmm. myself. So really when I speak or say what I'm going through or what's happened, I feel like I'm gaslit a little bit, you know, especially by family members that because mm-hmm. all they know is that our lives are parallel in so many different ways. But then there are moments where the path, it, my path is different and yours is different. So you might not necessarily know unless I tell you. Mm-hmm. And it's really, it's really frustrating. And so now it's like, I feel like I have to be calculated in my relationships with people, my interpersonal relationships, because I can't afford for you to tell me how I feel. And even though I can unpack different scenarios, you're like, it's not that dramatic. And it's really hard. And being strong, I guess some days, it's like you said, it's crippling where I don't want to go out the house or, and and now I find myself pulling, you know, like myself together. It's like, okay, you know what? This is today. Let me get up. Let me wash my face. Let me shower. And even if it's something that I'm going to do by myself, though, I would love to interact with somebody. Mm-hmm. I am going to do this for me. And and that's literally how I take it a day at a time. But that strong mess, mm-hmm. 
listen, I'm you preaching to, to the choir over here. I, I'm just like everything I want to say. I feel like you already said. I'm like, <laughs> the, first, the first thing I want to get out of here, out here, is that people ain't strong because they want to be strong. People are strong because they have no no other choice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it becomes a necessity, and it's like, okay, you're not gonna help me. They're not gonna help me. Well, who the hell gonna do it? I guess I gotta do it. You know what I'm saying? And that that that's the strong the strength. It's like, okay, it's either sit here and die or keep moving. Yeah. And so it's like, yeah, sure, I'm strong. Yeah, if that's if that's what you want to call it. Um, but yeah, I, I'm 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 so with you on that. The, the 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 thing about being very careful in who you relate your 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 thoughts and your struggle with is is so important because some people will will almost go out of their way to invalidate you. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And it's like it ain't that bad. Well, I mean, everybody go through. I mean, like you say, you, you pretty much being gaslit, and that that is the most painful thing. When when you finally f- feel like you can be vulnerable with somebody, you can share where you are and how you feel, and then they kind of look at you like, whatever, okay. It's like, well, okay, bet. So I know not to tell you nothing else. You know what I mean? Yep. And I, it's it's I I can't get over that. Like in in like you were saying, people you've even lived with and grown up with. Like my mom was like, you were always happy. You, you. I was like, ma'am, actually, I wasn't. Even as a child, I wasn't. I would tell y'all stuff, and y'all would be, wouldn't take me seriously. Mm-hmm. I remember, remember my fifth grade teacher. I said, this man don't like me. He literally hates me. And mom was like, you, you making that up? You making up? So she got to the school at parent teacher conference. She go, no, this man don't like you. And I said, hello. And I'm like. It, and, and it was always, I always felt like that. Like, I, I, especially as a child, but even as an adult, I feel like I'm forever trying to prove I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Like that. I felt that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I felt that. And, it, and it's weird, too, because I think why I really always gravitated toward you, too, is just that I always felt very comfortable. I always felt safe. And I think part of it, too, was because you were very aware of who you were as a person, and I always felt like I was very aware of who I am as a person. Mm -hmm. And which is honestly, I think I realized in the last maybe six years that Mm -hmm. that isn't the norm, you know, for people being so young and Mm -hmm. aware, confident in who they are. And it's like, I'm not dimming this light for you. like. That sounds like a you problem over there. You got to go deal with that. Mm-hmm. But I, me, this is just who I am. And it's either you like it or you love it. And I get, I, I, I understand that some people might not like me solely based on the, because of that. And I feel like mm-hmm. you're in that same realm. Yeah. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I feel like I, st- even though I was aware of myself, the not dimming my light part of it, I feel like that didn't come till I was an adult. Cause I felt like I was always trying to, bl- honestly, I feel like I was always trying to blend in or, you know, pull back. And, and I still catch myself in moments where it's like, okay, maybe I'm doing too much. Maybe I'm doing too much. But then it comes a point where it's like, okay, they're not going to like me either way. They're going to, yeah. they're going to like me when I'm dim and they're going to like me when I'm bright. So I might as well just shine. Why? I mean, and it's so funny that you say that because like, again, I, based on our interactions and what I saw, and, and maybe I just saw something and you, that was just like, yeah, I like Curtis. Like, he like me, and we out here, we getting it. Well, you know, like, and it just even some of the the, the conversations that we would just mm-hmm. uh, have. And I, just, I, I don't ever remember, like, walking out of a space with you. You know, like I said, I spent a lot of time in your office mm-hmm. where I felt judged or, or anything, you know, with any of our friends for the most yeah. part. You know, I felt like we all kind of had this, and I and, and it could just be too that it was such a small group of black people at Webster. There's a lot of that. Um, and I just felt super. We we gravitated and we like latched on to each other and we looked out for each other. Yeah, for the most I, part. I feel like well, I'm gonna say this. I I'm definitely a person who tries to listen to everybody just because I know what it's like to not be listened to. Mm-hmm. And I remember even as a child when I would find adults who would, who would like actually listen to me and like take what I have to say, like, like I'm just another person and not some little kid. 
those people, like I can name them off to this day. Like my best friend's mother, I always said her mother's passed a long time ago, but I will say to this day, she's one of the few people that I felt like I'm just, I'm all right being me because she would listen to me and be like, well, that sucks, don't it? And I'd be like, yes, that hurts. No, yes, it does. You know, and she would just listen to me and be like, yeah, that makes sense. And having that feeling for myself, I always try to give it to somebody else. For yeah. real. And it's like, I, I, if I can relate to you, I'm going to try to relate to you. You know what I'm saying? And even if I can't, I can at least make, try to make some room to listen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And be like, I don't necessarily get all of this. I ain't never been in that position, but I could, I could see how that, that would be painful. I could see how that would scare you. I could see, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. that's kind of always where I was. And it was um, funny because um, like you saying, me, I'm like, yeah, did I, I, I know who I, how I was, but did I want to talk about all of it? No. You know what I'm saying? And I think sometimes it was just still like, and maybe that was it. Like y'all had an inkling of, of, of the stuff that I wasn't saying. Like we can talk about sexuality. Let's just let's just drop that in, in in the bucket right now. Cause I'm like, I know I didn't talk about that at all while I worked at Webster, but all of the gay kids would always come in my office and always want to talk to me. And I would just be like, Okay, I guess I'll listen. You know what I'm saying? I'm not telling you my business, but for some reason y'all think it's safe to tell me. So I'm like, all right, let's go. And it, it, it I think maybe even in some of that, knowing that I was giving them that space it gave me the space to go, mm, well, maybe I need to give myself that space. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So when I came back to Webster uh, for, for, the, for the second round as an interim um, assistant director, that time I- Wait, wait, was, hold on, you went back after I was yeah, gone? Yeah, I didn't tell you that, did I? No, I actually, yeah, I actually went back um, because um, who they had hired, Nikki uh, took Nikki. over the spot, then Nikki yeah. left. And oh, so- God. I took, I was there for another semester. And that time, uh, Colette put me in charge of, of the, the, um, uh, the LGBTQ group and triple AC. So it, yeah, at that point it was just like, <laughs> yeah, let's, 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 come on, bring, bring it all in, bring it all in, you know? And at that Ooh. point, I guess I, I was just like, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to be real with y'all. Yeah. Been there, done that. Been there, done that. Yeah. And I want to say it was probably around that point. Um, um, was, was Nala still living in town by then? I'm trying to remember. Because I remember, because we were all out. And I was like, let me just tell y'all. So we, you know, we could go with her. I'm gay. And they, were, and they were like, yeah, we pretty much knew we that. Know. But <laughs> <laughs> but, I was, I, but you had to, we couldn't tell you who you were. Exactly. You had to allow, you, you know, like you said, the space to, okay, when you're comfortable, and if you're mm -hmm. never comfortable, that's okay, but yeah, Curtis. <laughs> yeah, but I, see, but that's, I think that's part of it too, is part of that, um, uh, how can I put it? When you when you are, are fully yourself, then I feel like that's when the real fun happens. That's when the real living occurs, you know what I'm saying? So that's, I think that was a big part of it. It was like, I, I know who I am out in public. And if y'all gonna be out in public with me, y'all need to know who that is too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that, that that was that was a big part of it for me at that point. It was like, okay, people who know me know how I get down, and yeah. I that sounds crazy, but I mean, but I'm just I'm saying. Like, so how do you get down? Are you I mean, let me be all in your business? Do you not I mean, eat all day? Are you you know? I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I mean, here's my thing: people who 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 know me socially know that I have fun. I have fun, and and when I'm at when I'm at work in a work capacity. I'm I'm pretty straight laced. I'm like you know yes I get mm, that makes good sense yeah I mm, will expedite hey. that. But if I'm out, it's a whole nother person. And, I'm, and and if I'm feeling real loose and real free, you are gonna get some. Hey girl, what's tea? Yeah, yes, yeah, do that. <laughs> yeah, but you know it is. But it's just really about how comfortable I feel at that point. You know what I'm saying? And it's like yeah. if I'm gonna be if I'm gonna be comfortable with y'all like I claim I am, then I need to be fully comfortable, and that's really what where I got. At that you, point, you, you know. know, it's so funny because I, I'm I am like that. And I remember when I was managing for this cosmetic brand, I managed this older lady. And I'm gonna say something, and I don't give a damn if it sounds ages at all, because y'all just be making up shit and trying to make everybody feel inclusive and not left out. I don't give a I don't care. My experience with managing women that are older than me has always been the worst pain in my ass. 
mm-hmm. because they feel like because they have some years on you that they cannot tell you anything, which is not true. Because just like I can learn something from you, you can learn something from me, and you're gonna learn how to do this damn job correctly or get the hell mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. And my department manager. I can still whoop her ass to this day. Like, don't let me see you. She lucky. The last time I saw her, I was no longer working for this company and we were at a wedding. She was lucky it was a wedding. Let's just say that. But she said to me, why don't I take the time to get to know her? You know, and really um, learn about her personal life. I said, because I'm here to talk numbers. I'm not supposed to, I don't, you missing the, missing the mark here. They've been, the company's already reported to me that they've been having an issue with this person and they needed somebody strong and confident to come in and, and reel it in and, and dial it in with her or she needs to go. I'm like, it's one thing to have a conversation, but there's certain things that I should not know about. Mm-hmm anybody that works with me and vice versa because we know how people are Mm -hmm. i've had people try to use certain you know and and just even small little things well let let me ask you something was was she a pink person a palm person well technically according to the census yes but she not okay because i'm gonna say that's one thing i've noticed recently that i think is culturally different when we at work, we here for work. You know what I'm saying? Friends are cool, but we we here to to, to make a paycheck. That's it. That's Whereas it. a lot of our Caucasian um, people, they want to build relationships and feel like family. When I'm just telling you, this is what this is what it is. And and for me, it has been a challenge recently because I am I work uh, in an in a department now that is pretty mixed, but the black people really don't code switch like that you know what i'm saying it's mm-hmm. like they, they they are they they authentic black selves all the time and i and I actually i'm gonna say this is probably the first job where i felt like i could be as black as i am mm-hmm. all the time instead of having to you know code switch and yes i you know yeah I, you know just right. just putting on i don't want to say putting on eyes, but just being um what they deem professional because mm-hmm. i because when, when i love this about one of my co-workers i'm like she's from she is from East St. Louis, and she gives East St. Louis all the time. But she, don't know her, she don't know her stuff, and that's one thing I love about she be on her job. And I'm like, you, you, you say what you want, but she knows what she's doing. You know, I I feel like at the current job that I have, it mm-hmm. it's like me and one other. I believe she's black. Mm-hmm. Um, person, you know, black girl. And then they're like store managers, or whatever, like a couple of working the stores that are um, black. I really don't code switch anymore. You know, I will, I've never, I, it's not that even that, I never even felt like, you know, we were super good or speaking a lot of Ebonics anyway, um, just because our, I'm, I'm like, I'm pretty sure your, you know, your mom and dad were also like, you know, speak proper. So it was very, hard in our house when it came to things like that so it's not like that i code switch now there are certain things of course i'm not gonna get on a call and say but you know if it is if it's something a point i'm trying to get across and it's super clear and someone's not understanding that i will be a little more stern with that like bro like but i'm not doing that no more like why should i make you feel more comfortable well, every day I wake up and I'm black mm-hmm. and it's as great as it is, it can be a little unsettling and uneasy because I don't know what's going to happen. Hell, I don't know what's going to happen if I go to sleep in my damn bed. That's mm-hmm. that's the reality of the situation. And it's always interesting. We saw a tweet <laughs> the other day and this black woman said, one day I'll talk about how people of color are not allies in Los Angeles. And my friend uh, sent it to me mm-hmm. and we experienced, she moved back to DC, but we experienced some racism together in Santa Monica at the hands mm-hmm. of this guy was either Persian or Armenian. I think based on the accent that he was Armenian. Okay. 
uh, and called us some monkeys. Wow. Yeah. So it, it, it is, it's a lot to take in. I'm finding out from this girl that I brought back um, and I never wanted to her to leave, period. And that's another thing too. I think uh, black people, we're quick to recognize somebody's value and what they bring. Whereas, mm-hmm. you know, white people and other people might not look past the basic skill that this person possesses. And I went through hell trying to keep this person because she was, you know, like a temp, mm-hmm. but she was one of like the warehouse workers. She didn't really have like the computer skill. And I was really, you know, like advocating for her and say, hey, let's mm-hmm. train her. I don't want to lose this person because mm-hmm. I can see that she brings value. I know she's going to do the work. It's not going to be a problem. It's mm-hmm. not going to be a huff and puff. And here we are now. And so as we're getting closer, uh, we, and we talk about different things. Uh, um, and she mentioned that this woman, older woman, Latina woman, said that I got my promotion because I got this job. It was a temp job. And then I got hired on permanently and then got promoted within six months. And she said that I got this job because I was black and I was replacing the black person when they didn't want to hire her and bring her on and all this stuff. And so it's funny how things come back to you Mm -hmm. and she just didn't want to work. She just didn't want to work. And it was Mm -hmm. really that simple. And, um, she was on our final anyway, and she was, you know, headed out, but then wanted to go to part time. So mm-hmm. I was okay with that. And I still was like, you know, sure, that's not a problem, but you couldn't even show up for your part time shifts. Wow. And so, um, you know, I she was blocked on all my social media, and then I created a TikTok. Mm-hmm. Why do you want to follow me on TikTok? What you, what you, oh. Wait, wait, wait. Why you? Why do you want to be over here? Why do you want to be in the know? See, I, that's the thing. Now, nah, that's the part I I don't get. I'm like, you, why are you that pressed? I'm like, do, you don't you don't you don't need to know. Do you? I mean, how how is that going to change your life? How is that going to make you any better? And I think sometimes, well, I do know why. Because sometimes people feel like, well, if I can catch them when they down, I'm gonna feel better. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. They they wait to see you screw up and go. See, I knew it. I knew you wouldn't shit. I knew you. You know, and and sometimes you just gonna be waiting, baby, because ain't nothing happening over here, except it, we going up. You know, <laughs> is that, that is the weirdest thing to me because I will never understand subscribing, following somebody that I I'm like. Oh, I don't really even even celebrity stuff. The things that people leave under their comments. I'm like, girl. Go outside, get some fresh air. It's the right. weirdest. It's the you weirdest fast, like, thing that the phenomenon that is happening, in in the and I, I understand why a lot of people have their comments selected to where only certain people can respond, mm-hmm. like that they follow, because it has to be everybody else, especially you know. I mean, Beyonce don't care. She's like, y'all be just gonna talk, whatever. It don't matter. So I mean, mm-hmm. I'm gonna see it all, but. It's like, do you know how much time that takes to type and to hit send to try to ruin somebody or or just to get a reaction? Mm -hmm. And that goes back to uh, being self-aware, like like you were saying before. I feel like a lot of people do stuff so they don't have to look at themselves. It's like they get invested in celebrities' lives because they don't want to look at how little of a life they got. You know, and it's like, get off that phone. Like, like get get into your own life. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to be on that phone and talk to some people in your life, you know what I'm saying? Make some exactly. plans for yourself. Do something that, that will get you further along. But the thing is, folks don't mind the status quo. Folks don't want to get deeper into who they are. They don't want to do this quote-unquote shadow work. Like, okay, what, what are my insecurities? What yeah. what what, what, what where did this trauma why am i triggered right now that's that's like my my biggest thing it's like why am i why why am i reacting like this to this situation because yeah. sometimes it's like little stuff and all of a sudden you fly off the handle and it's like that didn't warrant that so how did we get here you know what i mean <laughs> listen 
I was reactive around the holidays. Mm -hmm. And I tried now if now if I'm not a reactive person, contrary to popular belief, mm -hmm. I crack jokes. A lot of stuff is for entertainment purposes. I'm really mm -hmm. not because I don't want to be called slipping curtains, right? So mm -hmm. I was reactive mm -hmm. in a public space. One place that you never really that I'm really big about that. Like, hey, everybody go get sleep. I'm gonna cut you out behind closed doors when we get home. Ooh. I was reactive, and I and I think and when and I was shout out to my homeboy uh, Nick, aka he's going by Naeem now. He's on a different journey, and I love it. I love it for him. And I called him, and he said he let me say what happened, and he said, "How did that make you feel? Why do you think you were reactive? Because what what you did is already done. It's in the past now." So let's let's focus on why the why you said and you did what you did. And I don't think I ever really had a friend like or anybody really say say that. And like I and I did, I would go to the counselor and therapy at Webster as well, um, after experiencing a huge loss. And even then, we unpacked a lot of other things that helped me move forward. But I never had anybody say that. And I was like, wow. And then was able to list why, the why. And it felt so good. It felt mm -hmm. so, it was like a breakthrough. I was like, man, look at me. Look at me having a breakthrough through these tears. <laughs> you being like that. I, and I've always been a person to like needing to talk things through. And that's why I, I even tell folks, I'm like, if you don't want, if you don't believe in therapy, you still need to find a person to 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 talk to, I think, because sometimes it's, it's just a matter of talking through why you felt like that. What or what you know what I'm saying? Cause sometimes people just be like, I'm I can't believe they did it. But like like you said, but no, why no, why did that bother you? Why did why did yeah. that press that button for you? Because they could have did that to somebody else and they they wouldn't have responded that way. Yeah. You yeah. That way because of a number of reasons. And if you're willing to be real with yourself, you can talk about them. Yeah. And I think that was the, I always want to show up as my true authentic self. And that's been one of the things that has always been me because I always want to be, it's not that like relatable. I think, I think what we're missing in society and why I even created this podcast was that we needed people to be them. We I want to have fun conversations. I want to have tough conversations with people and, and kind of just relate. Like, you know, maybe I'm the new age Oprah. Who knows? Maybe I'm Wendy Williams, but not as me. Because she has other stuff, you know, like things, you know, but it's just I want people to able be to be able to like walk away and feel fulfilled, whether it's on a funny level or whatever, but it's just we're not having these conversations Well, you know, yeah. even, even our neighbor, we're not having these conversations. Mm -hmm. And my, so many, you know, of my friends are struggling with their mental health and have been struggling prior to the pandemic. And, you know, I have a friend for the most, I always, for the most part, if I can, I want to pick up the phone just because I know what has this person has been through what they're going through. So I never, want to get a call saying that my friend harmed themselves. So I always mm -hmm. try to show, like pick up that phone. Mm -hmm. Now I'm like, hey, now look, I be having my phone on do not disturb in the middle of the night. So you might not get through, <laughs> but, but for the most part, I, and if I can't pick up, I send a message like, hey, this is what I'm doing. I'm hit you, right? You know, is everything okay? Are you, you know, just trying to make sure because I, I know what that feels like sometimes to, you know, even through through the laughs and the, you know, jokes and stuff. Sometimes I do feel alone. You know, people be busy. Everybody is, you know, like you said, life is life. In, and everybody can't always, you know, talk on the phone or talk you through something. So it's mm -hmm. like being able to also get comfortable with sitting with yes. yourself and, mm -hmm. and not letting the bad thoughts control you. It's like, okay. How can I work through this? What's the solution to this? And I, I will say, 
I've become more solution based mm-hmm. in my recent years, which mm-hmm. can be a good and bad thing. Because sometimes yeah. it doesn't yeah. allow you to sit. Because uh-huh. sometimes you need to feel that. So I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. let me give myself a little space to feel what I'm feeling and then let's move mm-hmm. on. Yeah. No, I agree with you on that because actually that was a, that was a big lesson for me because I've always been a solution based person. If you come to me talking about a problem, I'm like, well, okay, look, I'm gonna start throwing things at the at the wall. Like, how does that sound? How does that sound? How does that sound? And my best friend one day she just stopped me dead in my track. She was like, and I talked about this on TikTok before. I was like, she just said, I don't need a solution. I just need you to listen, and mm-hmm. that that blew my mind at that point. I was like. Sometimes you just need to sit in some stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's not even that you 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 might know what to do, but you just yeah. are in your feelings right now. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with being in your feelings. Just take that moment, feel it, and then move on. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes you, you want to at least share it with somebody so they know this is what's going on with me. And it right. isn't that they, they need that solution. It's just like, can, can, you, can you sit with me in this for a second? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I... That is that is powerful, and that is powerful when you learn how to sit by yourself, like you were saying, sitting in silence. Even I think that's a big thing that that we in this generation avoid like the plague. We got to have something on. If it's the music, if it's the TV, if you know something, something got to be on. There got to be some noise. We do not like silence, and I'm like, to me, that's when you 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 get most of your answers if you yeah. can just sit in silence with your thoughts and just really start asking the, the tough questions. Like you saying, like, well, what, why do I feel like that? What, what is this really about them? Or is this really about me? You know what I mean? Cause yeah. or is this really about them? You know, cause, cause sometimes it's a, it, you would think it's one thing and then it turns out it's really the other mm-hmm. depending on who you are. Cause I'm like, I'm, I'm good for internalizing stuff. So if something happened, it's gotta be my fault. That's always you the know- thought. It's it's interesting you say that because a lot of times things have nothing exactly. to do with you at all. Exactly. And that's one thing that I'm learning. And, and, and before we move to that point, I'm also, what I have started to do in my, my friendships is mm-hmm. be very aware of how many times somebody has mentioned something to me. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, a lot of people say, you get this one time or you keep bringing this up. Da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. I allow you to say what you, what you said, you know, said and how you feel, but then I'll become solution based. And that recently happened. You know, I told a friend, I said, Hey, this is like the sixth time you mentioned this to me and not keeping tr- like numbers or anything. But I said, what's going on? Let's really break it down and let's try to look for something that's going to solve the problem. And I know a lot of it is is work related. I said, have you thought about going on leave? You know, I know that's easier said than done, but I was like, mm-hmm. let's explore that option of, of going on leave. Mm-hmm. And then from there, and then the response was, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm already getting anxiety if I do that by going back. I said, you, 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 you get in the future too much. Let's stay present, hold on. Because of a lot of our mm-hmm. anxiety and stress comes from things that have not even happened. Or things that. that happened and we can mm-hmm. change it. So Say I was like, that. okay, what can I do moving forward to make myself comfortable mm-hmm. and, and, and aware and how to proceed? And I told her, I said, hey, do you need a doctor? Do you need like what what are what the, what are the things that we can do to get you to this point? Don't think about going back. Think about the relaxation that's coming with that. Mm-hmm. Don't think about the workload. Let's just focus on possibly getting you to go on leave. And then while you're on leave, maybe take a week to reset. And then if you thinking about different opportunities and wanting to go other places and branch out, this start doing the groundwork for that. But mm-hmm. I don't want you to think about having to go somewhere, back to somewhere that makes you uncomfortable. And sometimes you might just need the reset. Yeah. You know, it's so much happening with these companies, companies downsizing and mm-hmm. adding extra work, not wanting to pay you more. And I'm like, maybe you'll go back with clarity and, you know, are able to negotiate something else that will make you satisfied. Uh, maybe you you'll maybe you'll find that you don't even want to be there no more. I think and I think that is what a lot of people are afraid of uh, yeah. sometimes when it comes to this stuff is when I think when you when you when you force yourself to stop 
you have to really look at stuff. And then when you really look at stuff, sometimes you realize this ain't it. This yeah. this never was it, and it ain't ever gonna be it. And yeah. but people are scared to change a lot yeah. of stuff. They're scared to to make them. I I have a friend. I I told her over like over a year, a year and a half ago, quit th that job. That job. Every time you talk about that job, you're like in the pits. It's and and you you're unhappy. And you know she was telling me, oh, well, I've looked for it. And I'm like, sometimes, I mean, I understand it, you know, when the, when the old folks be like, you better have another job before you quit. Sometimes I think you need to quit. If, if mm -hmm. it's between this job and your sanity, go on and quit. Yep. Unemplo yep. Unemployment's there, honey. Just I, I, I know somebody that recently did that. Unemployment, but you said what? I said maybe not unemployment if you quit. But no, 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 you, you know, no, no, no. But I know what you're saying because we're. I, I love that for our generation too because we're taking our mental health so much mm -hmm. more seriously because life, we, we, Life is so precious and, and, and fragile and and so many amazing things can happen, but your mental health, your peace of mind is something that is a luxury that we don't mm -hmm. focus on enough. And I, t I had a girlfriend say that she felt like I chose peace more than violence. I said, y'all know what I've been through and, and, and the battles that I've had with myself to even get here. So mm -hmm. I you it, it might not be for you to understand, but it's for me and I sleep well at night, for the most and, part. And my thought is, a lot of people don't think about it in the moment, but years from now, you're going to be like, did I spend that time the best I could? Mm -hmm. And I know I've definitely spent years in spaces I that didn't benefit me when it was mm -hmm. all said and done. And it make more sense to me to, to think, think about it in the moment than to look at it down the road and be like, Oh man, that's ten years of my life. I could have did something else with. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that I I hate that the the, the thought of that, and I hate that thought for generations before us, the yeah. ones who stayed in marriages that weren't anything, and because it was like, well, that's what I was taught to do. You stay mm -hmm. and you do, and it's like, but girl, that man beat on you. That man cheated. That man had outside children, and you stayed there for what? You could have found somebody, or you could have been happy by your damn self. And people don't think about you can literally be happy by yourself. You know, I but again, generational things that happen and I know they did the best they could with what they had. And a lot mm -hmm. of people, it goes down to financial things. True. You know, a, a lot of you saw the post that I posted about, um, you know, people pretty much saying how hard it is to date an educated, you know, woman and all this stuff, but a lot of it comes down to, my friend made a valid point, is that we can do better by ourselves. We are financially stable. Uh, so what are you bringing to the table? You're always asking mm -hmm. us, but it's like, what are you doing that makes me want to stay? Are you advocating for me? Are you really showing up for me like I'm showing up mm -hmm. for you? If you're mm -hmm. not doing that and you're not meeting me in the middle, marriage is a partnership. Relationships yeah. are a partnership. It is a mm -hmm. business. It is not what it was. 50, 60 years ago. And that's really close down the line. And we don't have to deal with that. Mm -hmm. It's going to be somebody else that's going to value me and see my work. And I mm -hmm. can walk away and have peace of mind. Yeah. And I think that's the memories. Yeah, we had some bomb sex. Okay. But but you hitting on something um that I've I've been talking about with my friends a lot. Um, the, the idea that we can't keep going on these old uh gender roles like this the mm -hmm. man do this the woman if this woman is making making more money than you then let her make more money than you yeah that means you got to bring something new to the table that means okay then can i support her emotionally can i support her mentally when she comes home can i let me be the person to ease her mind let me yeah. have stuff because my thing is if i'm not working the hours she working that means my ass could be at home cleaning up imagine that i could be cooking imagine that yeah. I could be with the kids. Imagine that. It's so funny. Do you watch Married at First Sight? I don't. Oh, it's a lot. It's a great mess. Um, there's a guy. There's this guy named Steve. Um, and he got married to this girl named Noi. And he's the amazing guy, but no job. Mm -hmm. At the height of the pandem pandemic, I think he quit his job. He was traveling, backpacking to different places, getting these new experiences. And he was like mm -hmm. a... He was like an engineering sales or something like that. So he made good money. Mm -hmm. So he went into this um, not having a job and mm -hmm. kind of not wanting to work. 
but kind of do more entrepreneurial things. But Noe grew up poor. Mm -hmm. So every, you know, her idea of, you know, a solid life is both partners need to work. Mind you, he still had more money than her in the eight weeks that they were married, you know, and they stayed mm -hmm. together. But she was like, what are you going to do for money? And he's laying it out for her saying, hey, I, you know, made some calls. I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm really about doing my own thing. You know, mm -hmm. if push comes to if I need to get a job, I, I, he's like, I don't think you understand what my job was and the money that comes with that. It's enough for me to get a job. Mm -hmm. But I'm taking care of the house. I'm cooking. I'm cleaning. I'm paying more and contributing more to the bills than you are. Mm -hmm. And part of me wonders, I might have, I wonder if he, he couldn't have shown her his, his bank accounts mm -mm. because he clearly is not, he's not saying something. Mm -hmm. And I get it. He's probably doing it to protect himself. But you know, that idea of him being a stay at home dad, like is like, she can't grasp that. Right. And, and, and that's why I'm, cause I'm yeah. sitting there like, cause if you if the bills are being paid, even with him being at home, that should put something else in your head other than why ain't you working? It should yeah. just be like, okay, so so l l let's let's map this out for real. You know what I'm saying? And I I it blows my mind that because so many women are like that though. They're like, well, he he need to have a job. He need to do this, that, and the other. But I'm like, sis, if if you making six uh, figures, do he really need the work? <laughs> and I ain't, I ain't saying that, right. that your man should sit at home and do nothing. But I'm just saying maybe there's something else he can contribute to that space rather than a paycheck, especially if you know that you degreed up and, and, and you you making paper that 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 man ain't ever going to make. You know what I'm saying? Well, see, in the sense, the guy that I've been dating, um, he has this idea of ultimately wanting to be a stay at home dad. Mm -hmm. I said, first of all, you're an Aquarius. It's not happening because I know how our mind works about the Aquarius. Mm -hmm. So you're going to mm -hmm. be creating and just something and you talk about writing this book. I said, but you also have a business that you created from the ground up that will ultimately work for you. You will put people in place where this works for you. Mm -hmm. So you saying you're not working, you're going to be working, but maybe not in the capacity that you have been working in. Mm -hmm. like, so I get what you I said. I don't have a problem with that. Like do what you got to do, but just make sure this like and a great cook. Mm -hmm. All these different things. So I'm like, I don't have a problem with that, but I just know, I just know how yeah. his life work. So yeah. I'm like, you'll be entertained. Like, you'll be all right. All right, cool. But I mean, <laughs> I, I, I think what it comes down to is making sure that it works for you and whoever you with. I don't even right. know how we got here, but I'm like, but I think the big part of it is, is that it's got to work for y'all. It can't be based on what, what mom and them told you. It can't be based on yeah. what, what your uncle and your granddaddy told you. It's got to be, okay, does this work for us? Yeah. And and that's the thing is that I think that a lot of the, the 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 things that we have in place, a lot of us are realizing like that nuclear idea of a family kind of doesn't mm -hmm. exist anymore because things look so different now, mm -hmm. you know, and people are finding um, their happiness when it comes to like, you can be married and y'all have separate houses. Mm -hmm. We're seeing that more and more like people mm -hmm. wanting their space yeah. and you know, oh, you like, oh, you have a kid. I don't want a kid, so that works out. You already had a kid, so you don't have to expect that from me. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, so I, I think the normal social ideas, I th status quo, is crumbling. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and that's I why we have these people in these these office, which should have terms and, and limitations, by the way. But that's for another day. But a lot of these old people, old white mm -hmm. people, men. Mm -hmm trying to hold on to that because they see mm -hmm. what's coming so mm -hmm. yeah because because they right because they really don't know what what they can do with what's coming because all they know is this what they should and, do is retire but then do what though that's the reason why they hold on with like a death grip because they don't they what else can they do they, they, they should retire and go read a book or write a book do you know how easy it is to get a book published now on amazon but you gotta have something to say. That's because somebody I'm listen. Somebody got something to say. Because every other day that Quantrell dude that they be promoting books on uh, Bala Alert and all them other pages be making these crazy stories. Go, go get creative. Just gonna make you something, huh? <laughs> Lord, 
ahead. The last thing I want to ask you about before we go um, mm -hmm. is your idea of boundaries and what you have done because um, I think that's something that our, our generation has hung on in as well. Mm -hmm. And we're putting things in place that really make our lives so much more peaceful mm -hmm. and being able to let go of things and people that no longer like serve us and that can understand and whether it be a family member a friendship a job whatever the case may be but what are some of the steps that you've taken uh you know regarding putting boundaries in place to enjoy your happiness wow um that's i feel like that's an ongoing one uh for me um I think the biggest thing for for me is that I started paying attention to who I felt happy with, who I felt comfortable with, who I felt at peace with, and then who every time I was with them, it felt like I was being drained. Mm. I'm 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 really an introvert. People don't believe that, but I'm I'm very much an introvert. And people, I there are certain people I'm like the when they call, I look at the phone and be like. And it's like, do I even want to pick this up? And I've gotten to the point now where some people I don't even pick up because I don't want that. Like you were saying, some people just want to be in their mess and yeah. they'll talk to you about it and they don't want a solution, but they're not trying to fix it either. They just want somebody to, to talk about it with. And it's like, I I can't dwell in that, especially if you don't even want to fix it. I'm, I, my identity is not going to be built on, on my trauma. My identity is not going to be built around uh, me playing the victim and, if that's what you want, I can't do it. I just can't. Um, but when I started seeing who was draining me, who was making me mad, who was making me anxious, then I started saying, okay, what exactly is happening in those spaces that it, that's that I'm not cool with? And so certain people, I just had to say, nope, we're not, we, I can't talk about that with you. No. Mm. No, I'm, mm -mm, girl, change the subject. But, but how about such and such? You know, you, you, how can I put this? You really have to be proactive about you. Like you said, your peace, you have to be proactive about it. And, and the second, you can't necessarily tell nobody what they can and can't do what they can and can't say, but you can definitely say what you're going to accept in your space. Mm, yep. That's been, been my, my big thing. Like, okay, if that's what you're going to do, then I, let me excuse myself to, 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 to my corner because we don't, we, we, we're not trying to do that. And that's, that's really it for for me, and it, and, and it was hard for me just because I I want everybody to be happy. So yeah. if somebody wants something, somebody asks me to do something, nine times out of ten I'm going to say yes. But when I feel like me doing for you becomes an expectation that's not appreciated, that's not um, recognized as me doing something for you, and because some people actually believe you're just supposed to do for them, and I'm like no, mm -hmm. no. And so when I got to that point, I started just saying no. No. And yeah. I used to say no. And here's why. But the more I said no, the more I realized no is all I need to say. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. No explanation. I don't to... No nothing. Mm -mm. No, I, I can't. Not today. I can't. I'm sorry. I can't. And just move yeah. on. And I, like I said, the more you said, the easier it becomes to say. Um, and it's just. And actually, the older I get too, because my body just don't work like it used to. You know what I'm saying? At one time, I'm ripping and running. All day? Well, no problem. I, I'm 44. And I'm like, when I when I feel beat, I feel beat. And I'm like, why am I going to take what limited energy I got to invest in your dreams and your wants and your wishes? And especially when you don't even appreciate it, when I do it. So, no. I think boundaries um, have recently come more into play uh, this year for me. And I've always kind of been like, you know, like I said, I, I'm like, this doesn't work. I, I've excused myself from spaces. Like, I, like, and when I said, I mean, in the literal sense, like, Oh, we doing this again? Check please. Like, mm -hmm. and because I could see, you know, see what was coming and I'm mm -hmm. like, Nope, 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 Nope. And then hey, you know, so we, though. Before you go to, all you have to do is do that once, and folks won't won't put you in that that space ever again. You know, you 
you'd be surprised how people are so slow. Because mm. I, 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 I remove myself from that situation and I, I hit them with a check, please. Mm-hmm. I, you would think that a person will realize that this is a no-no, as Mariah mm-hmm. says. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> <laughs> but it would slowly come full circle. And mm-hmm. I said to her, and I said, this is the moment that you tell the truth, regardless of how it, it's going to sound, but be gentle, but tell the truth. Mm-hmm. And I said, this is why I walked out of that restaurant. And I said, I knew this was going to happen to you. And I was trying to prevent this from happening to you. Mm-hmm. I could see based on the actions that you were in it. And I was on the outside looking in, but I was trying to protect you. And you couldn't see that. And now here you are. So mm-hmm. you have to figure that out. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm not your savior. That's not my job. Yep. And so you have to figure it out because now you've there are elements that have been added to it mm-hmm. that are permanent. Mm-hmm. I don't know. All I can do is be a friend to you, hang out, whatever. We can go to dinner, but outside of that, nah. I'm supposed to be about that stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 putting boundaries in place, I would say, with family members, is probably mm-hmm. the worst. Yeah, because they believe that you. They always look at you like you're a child. And right. even even with if I were, there's still a way I believe that you should handle ch- children. Mm. There's a certain way that you can talk to them um, to get them to kind of understand what's going on and, and why this is important or why what they did was wrong or whatever. Mm-hmm. And recently it was something that kept coming up and i was like hey yo like i don't i don't talk about this mm-hmm. this has nothing to do with me this has nothing to do with you i wouldn't get involved if i was you go read a book that's my thing go find a hobby do something because mm-hmm. i don't call my phone with this mess because it's like you said it's draining if every time i get off the phone with you it's draining what are we doing mm-hmm. you know a lot of people are bored and so that's their form of entertainment. But I'm like, you know, spring chicken. So getting worked up about something, that could be life or death for you. And I'm not even trying to be funny. But it's real, yeah. But it it's is. real because we know how stress is out here and what it's doing mm-hmm. to people. Mm-hmm. I just saw a tweet, a girl, they said, this girl said her coworker died of a heart attack. And she was like 29 years old. And her job encouraged her to take time off. Take time off. They had to force my boss to take time off. He went on vacation. Same time I went on vacation for my birthday. He's like, yeah, they forced me to go. And I'm like, you know spring chicken, sir. That's the culture. It's it's so crazy. It's like, for some reason, we think it's a badge of honor if we can keep working, if we keep working and don't stop and we just do everything. We take no days off. When you dead, they don't give out awards for that. They 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 don't. don't Ain't nobody finna be up at your funeral like, well, she she worked every day. Because it won't even matter. It won't. And it, I, it, it blows my mind. But I want to go back to something you, you were saying about family. Because because it, it struck a nerve with me about people treating you as, as children. I say half the problem is that black folk treat children like property. Because mm. my thought is, if you talk to a child like a future adult, you there would there would even be no transition. You know what I'm saying? Yep. It, it would just it, you would just be talking to them like a person. But a lot of times we don't see that. Like you do it because I said no. That's that's a future adult. Tell them why they need to do this or why they shouldn't do that. Make it make sense. And yep. if you can't make it make sense, then maybe you need to rethink it for yeah. real. It's I have a um, like a, a niece, god niece, nephew. Mm-hmm. Um, they're my heart and. She's so smart because for this long period of time, you know, it was just her. She's like five now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being around adults, 
she's very inquisitive or um, she hears certain things. So you kind of got to be, you know, you still have to be kind of aware of what you're saying around kids. But I interact with her on a certain level and mm-hmm. everybody's like, I mean, she's a shit. I'm like, yeah, she a kid, but yeah, like she don't have to grow up. Exactly. That. Like, and, and so I say certain things to her and if it's something she said that could be wrong, I correct her mm-hmm. or I'll explain why or add some, a layer to it. Like recently mm-hmm. she, like I said, I was very, my mom, well, when growing up, you know, really kind of like built my confidence, you know, um, you know, because my sister was lighter skinned and, you know, I was like skinny, long fingers, like I ain't gonna never go into these fingers, like they're just there. And um, so I thought this was like a social norm that was happening with people. Like I thought everybody's parents were saying these things to them and help build their kids up. And, you know, like I said, later in life, I would find out that that never happened for a lot of people. And um, my, my play, my, we adopted each other, so he's my brother. So yeah. his mom had came in town and um, we're all in Texas. And she had complimented me, like complimented my makeup and all this. She's like, oh, D, your makeup is so nice and blah, 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 blah. I was like, thank you. So my niece yells out, well, I'm pretty. And we were like, yeah, you are pretty, but you are smart. You are wise. You're caring. You are also loving. You are not just pretty. You are so many amazing things. I said, do you know how many people just rely on they pretty? Mm. It's not going to be you, girl, because you have so much more to offer. But we also know where she got this information from. Mm. But, you know, it's it's like reminding them it's building them up in other ways outside of that Mm -hmm. and and so when i brought it to jeff's attention you know he was like you know um thank you for that but that's why i don't want her involved in certain things and we know who what person is i said no you can't say that she can't do certain activities because it could potentially cloud her judgment it's just leveling things out for her yeah you know, and I'm like, that's that's the thing about being a parent. It's just like you can't take something away. I mean, you can, but then comes with that comes resentment, mm-hmm. and you don't want that. So just say, hey, if 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 that's what you want to do, cool. But this is what comes with this, and this is what you, yeah. what we're not gonna allow. So it's like you know, it's weird, but it's just dealing with family when it comes to to boundaries and different things. Like you said, we look at people like, like, like their tools and just objects when they're Mm -hmm. not. That's why a lot of kids are screwed up. Yep. That's exactly it. And I mean, and you couldn't have said it better. I'm I'm totally there with you. It's like, you can't, people want to protect their children from everything, but you can't. It's it's, because one day day you're not going to be there for one reason or another. You're not going to be there. And so what you need to do is prepare your child Mm-hmm. For, for whatever the world has it and at least give them a, a, a mindset or a, a frame to, to put it in you know what i'm saying like you said there may be people in their lives who say the craziest stuff and do the most toxic things and you have to be able to say yeah that's not it that don't yeah. don't listen to that i'm gonna tell you why that that's crazy because i know this about you i know that about you so right. whatever they say that's nonsense and if you and if you aren't that aware as a parent you go, you gonna miss it, and and they all that mess is gonna get in their head, and that's yeah. what, what's gonna play. Not not you can tell them they pretty all you want, but all they're gonna hear is all the other mess that that comes yeah. because you didn't instill enough of the other stuff. Yeah, you know? and it's interesting because you know my mom always, you know, like told us just not to like live in that space. You know, our grandfather was like that. You know, our dad was like that. And it's just, it's, and, and, and of course, a lot of things that we see today with social media does not, it looks like it's nothing else outside of that. Mm-hmm. And, but that's not true. You know, um, it, it was interesting. <laughs> My boss was telling me like, in so many ways, he was like, yeah, but everybody not like how you are. 
that was the biggest takeaway I took from yeah. therapy. <laughs> I was like, everybody's not like how you are. Like, and he was like, the the tenacity, like the effort, all this. He's like, some people just not gonna get it. Mm-hmm. And he's like, and that's not a bad thing, but that's just how it is. And you have to understand that. And and I was like, you're right, you're right. And I think we have a big issue because we expect ourselves from other people. Yes. And because we because of how we treat ourselves. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wow. All right, cool. I bet I know how to move on forward. Mm-hmm. And like you said, it, it also goes back to a lot of the shit don't have nothing to do with you. I mean, it's awesome. None of it. A lot mm-hmm. of people project and think that they can just beat up on you. And when mm-hmm. you tell them it's it's a no for me, mm-hmm. my favorite still, it's a no for me. Blah. I do it to so many people mm-hmm. because my piece is so much imp- like it's so important to me. And I think about and, and we we talk about our ancestors and being our ancestors like wildest dream. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think part of that is cutting something off because they didn't have the capacity and didn't have the space to be able to do that. Yeah. yeah. So that's real. And I'm like, oh, that's what we are. Like it just it, it just literally happened to me. And it's so weird because I was like, that's what you got from that? That that joke? It was literally a joke. And I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, this I was like, I'm reading this four page letter. This don't have nothing to do with me. But be blessed. <laughs> and I won't be a part of the rest of your journey here on earth, your time, because I've allowed you to, to take up too much space. And I can no longer do that. Yeah. And I I, 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 and I love it here. I love it here. And, you know, it's still a lot of people that feel like, Oh, well, that's your family. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, they're not my chosen family. Uh, that part. And, and, and cause my thing is right. Blood, Blood is what exactly? It. I mean, once once I'm in this world, I'm in this world. Yeah, yeah that is cool that we, that we related, but it does not obligate me to anything. Yeah, at all. I, I don't have to be a bing bag. I don't have to be a punching bag. At all. Especially at all. especially as an adult, that's my thing. It's like you you may feel like that as a child, but as an adult, <laughs> come on. Like, sir, ma'am, that y'all. Not doing it. Not doing it. And it's just, I, I all I can do is I'm also, and I say this a lot on the show, you know, we tell people we wish them well. I don't wish mm-hmm. you anything because I still, that means I have to give you energy. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to even do that. So I'm just like, sayonara. And that's it. That's really it. Mm-hmm. And it's fun here. You know, sometimes it's just like, you know, but I just really, Life can be so long, but so short to be miserable and to have relationships for people that they're miserable. Yeah. And I just want to be happy. And that's and my, really, and my, it's really that simple. And my thought is also when you talk about that, sometimes I feel like people don't even see the possibility of being happy unless they see you being happy. So yeah. sometimes if, if, if it requires you cutting people off, if it requires you, you know, just going a whole different direction, in a lot of ways, you blessing them because when, when they finally see what you did in that space, they, they got two options. It's either I can be mad about it or I can be, let me try that too. Yeah. And you I'm, know, and- our, our, I think about our parents and a lot of the stuff that they deal with and go through and they just move, maneuver through life. Mm-hmm. And and certain stuff that they say, and I'm just like, God, that sounds miserable. That sounds miserable. Yep. But the expectation was to just go, go through it, live with yeah. it. I think that's the craziest thing of it all. It's just like us recognizing the power of like letting go, being able to work through certain things things and and uh, and noticing noticing the uh i guess they would say the red flags traits Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so it never happens to us again yeah and we we add a layer and it's not that it's necessarily a defense mechanism but it is because you're like i gotta protect myself because i can't allow this to be in my space no more this field Mm -hmm. and you know what it's it's funny because i 
in my mid thirties, I, I I became really good at catching red flags, and I'd be like, no, nah, no, nah. and and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be transparent, and dudes would be like, no, nah, just because that happened with you and that dude don't mean it's gonna happen between me and you, and I'm like, oh, okay, you know what, you got one shot. And, and and literally, I would you would get that one shot, and then you go. Then I start seeing more of it. Boom. And it's yep. and at that point, I'm, I'm like, I can't even call it ghosting because I gave you a warning. I already told you I don't do that. And, mm -hmm. and, and you, and you headed down that road. Nope. It's, <laughs> it, it, it's so funny, and you're just like, and and I will say, I will say that sometimes I'm like that when it comes to relationships. Sometimes, like. Mm -hmm. it, you know, like interpersonal, like you're meeting new people, like friends and all this stuff, because that that is true. Sometimes and people are allowed to grow, too. I think that's the huge misconception is that we think that people, because of what they've done, their past, like shapes their their future, which isn't necessarily true. I don't believe that. Mm -hmm. And so people get stuck in certain spaces and he's like, oh, well, they person did this to me. And da, 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 da. and I'm like, at some point, everybody done did something to you. Maybe it's you. Yeah. But <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, like I said, like my relationship, you know, somebody might say, oh, Curtis, Curtis did, da, 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 da. and I was like, well, that's not our relationship. Mm -hmm. So I, I can't speak or, or, you know, speak to that because mm -hmm. That's not how we interact with each other, but we also have an understanding. So, yes. you know, and I'm so glad you you hit that because actually, I'm going through that with a friend now. They they feel as though I need to um, cut off certain people because of what they experience with them, and I'm like, that's between you two adults. And yeah. I, like you said, th that's not my relationship with that person. They the boundaries we have won't allow for that. So, yeah. I yeah, I can't relate. Yeah. And, it, and it's really that simple. And something recently happened where, and it happened to me and uh, like another like play brother, and we experienced some really weird traumatic experience, you know, through a person that we know through somebody else. And I was just like, hey, here's the thing. It's cool. Yeah, I want to still be friends. No problem. If that person is invited, I ain't got to go. And they're like, wait, what? I said, no. Nah. I'm like, the, the journey I'm working on That's true. is doesn't include that space and, and the react I, I would be reactive. I might act like my granny. And <laughs> it might be you, you self aware in that. You know what I'm saying? It's like the fact that you know, okay, that that I can't deal with. Yeah. I can deal with this, but I can't deal with that. And yeah. so because of that. I'm just gonna bow out, and I mean, it ain't no fit, no hard feelings, no nothing. I'll catch y'all on the next go round. And, Maybe and I'll do something else later. So, and, and I'm the I'm the type of person where I'm I'm just in, even in the space like don't even if if I'm not messing with nobody, I don't care who it is. Hey, don't say that name to me because it's like, or don't tell me about something that that they could have done and that kind of made you irritated. For what? Like it's like it doesn't serve. It doesn't. What what like what reaction do you think that I'm going to give you? And I'm like, this person is showing up as their as their true self to you. Mm -hmm. So why would you or you know? And, and and it even happened recently because this person is like I said, still friends with you know family. And I said, why do you say that person name? Why do you think I care? I said, why do you keep doing that to me? Mm -hmm. That's really just, it's not fair. Mm -hmm. Especially if, if, if you already know that, that, that there's a past to it. Yeah, it's like, don't even yeah. bring it up. Like, don't stop bringing it up. You know, and when you experience it, because you will, and you've been experiencing it, but you're too much of a, uh, you lack, you, you lack self-awareness to see what's mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. Don't call me with that. Don't say, no. Nah. Right. That's like, Curtis, that's like me calling you about Annie Mae. And I know that y'all don't get along. Mm -hmm. well, she did, or you know, they came here and then this happened. Why would you want to know? Why would I waste your time? You wouldn't want to. And, and my thing is, quite honestly, I already told you that that's the, the person they are. So now you've seen it for yourself. Why, yeah, why come back, back to me with it? 
Like now you can make a decision because I already told you what, what my decision is. Yeah, like I, I just, whew, baby, the ghetto, the ghetto. <laughs> like I said, people need certain things to entertain themselves. And mm-hmm. I will not, I am not, I'm not about to tap dance for you. I'm just not interested in it. So you figure that out. Yeah. And that's it. So we're going to wrap it up here. This was such an right. amazing time. Yeah, I was, I'm surprised. I'm like, ooh, this time went flying. It really, it really did. I told you, it's like, it's, it'll go by fast. Yeah. We'll have enough to talk about. I'll, you know, fill you in on things, and we'll talk about things and unpack some things, and yeah. hopefully guide somebody in the right direction in life. Because you know, oh. it only takes one person. If I get to one person, I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> I feel that. So tell the people where they can find you. What I'm, I'm Lord, I'm everywhere. I'm afraid. Um, <laughs> um, I, I'm still on Twitter. I, I pop in every now and again. Um, CJ Conrad. Really, I'm CJ Conrad everywhere. C J A Y C O N R O D. Twitter, TikTok, uh, Instagram, Facebook. You can find me even. I say follow me. Don't try to be my friend. If you interact with my post, I might not let you be a friend. But just just follow me. That's one thing. I, I can't stand Facebook for that. I'm like, I don't need to see your post. If you want to see mine, that's cool, but I don't need to see yours. Um, but yeah, I'm on the- people I hit unfollow on, mm-hmm. on Facebook so they don't even pop up. I'm like, I need just positivity, okay? I need jokes. Right. Well, I, well, I just need stuff that ain't gonna make me just hate people, and that's that's really what it comes down to. And I'm like, if you want that ghetto bull, I'm like, I'm, I'm cool. Um, but I'm I got a little bit of stuff on YouTube even. Um, and I'm trying to work on some music. I, I'll say that. So hopefully I'll, I'll be able to, to 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 put you on that in a little bit as well. All right. Yes, I love it. I love it. Do you ever perform with Adrian Felton or? No, I know her though. That okay. I love, I love Adrian. Adrian. Uh, yeah, she went to Antioch. Uh, mm, okay. Yeah. yeah so I, that's I, I know that with her before. Uh, me and her used to sing background for Coco Soul. Okay. Um, quite a bit. So I, I've 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 been around her. I, I saw her maybe not, about two months ago, and I was t- talking to her and about just getting back out there because it was I, I she was really building a, like a fan base right before COVID, and it was like it felt like you got to start all over again. She said, "Yeah," and I'm like, "But I'm but she doing it already. She did um the what is it uh, the Twilight Thursdays? Okay. At um the History Museum. She what did she do? Why did I go blank that fast? Anita Baker, I believe. I heard it was a good Ooh. crowd. Yeah, you know, I, 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 but again, it's a uh, a different age group because I know Adrian. If she made a TikTok or YouTube, mm-hmm. so it, it will pop because mm-hmm. those vocals. Those yeah, she's vocals, she's amazing. Oh. Yeah, she amazing and just a nice. Just I hope it's been a sweet person and that too. And that too. And that's like she's just sweet. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and and you'd be surprised how far that gets you in this life more than anything else. Just being a this decent movie. person. Yeah, you, you know, know what? what I'm like? Antoinette, Antoinette, I tell people, I say, Antoinette wouldn't hurt a fly. She's mm-hmm. just so sweet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Her and Rachel, never. I'm like somebody. Rachel, Antoinette said, "You a lie. <laughs> no, you a lie. What you do? <laughs> those are those people. I'm like, ain't mm-hmm. no way. Ain't mm-hmm. no way. But God, yes, mm-hmm. no." Don't forget to shop the candles. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's been an amazing, you know, interesting journey, lead, you know, going into entrepreneurship. There's so much to still learn. And mm-hmm. having a community around you, I have a girlfriend that has a line, too. And I was telling her one of the issues that I was having. Uh, and she was like, okay, let's, so let's get together and figure it out. Mm-hmm. So, and I'm like, you know, a lot of people wouldn't necessarily be like that. And she was like, no, nah, girl, it's enough space for all of us to win. I was like, well, I appreciate you, you know? And so we're going to work on that together. And I'm just, I'm just having a good time, like creating, it's very therapeutic too. So I be, when I'm making candles, I'm mm-hmm. like intentional and setting intentions as I'm pouring. So y'all, y'all getting this great energy. Y'all see this? Um, see, now you, I I let me pull my phone out now because I'm like, I, I, I really didn't realize you was hand pouring them joints. I'm like, for real? Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, they in the they, I'm hand pouring them in the kitchen. I did private label the first time. At some point mm-hmm. in my life, I know that God is going to have me so booked and busy mm-hmm. that I will probably have to do that and build it out a different way. Um, mm-hmm. But until then, your girl is pouring in her kitchen, spilling wax on her. Stove top, counter on the floor, make gotta clean it up fast enough, make sure the dog don't get to it. 
Right. It's a whole thing, but it's so it's so much fun and just just a vibe. And I like it here. I really do like it here. And I tell people that I haven't experienced this level of peace and joy. And like I said, mm-hmm. day by day. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, I'm happy. And mm-hmm. I just love creating. And yeah, and that's it. I'm t- telling you that it sounds like you you done you done figured out a few of the secrets already just just in, in in that day by day thing. I think sometimes we get so wrapped up in trying to think about everything, and it's just like all you gotta do is get through today, baby. Yeah, all you just gotta do is, and and sometimes all you gotta do is get through this 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 next hour. If you can just get through this next hour, you can get through the next hour. You can get through the next. And next thing you know, you done made it through the whole day. You know what I'm saying? And I just. Yeah. It's so crazy how we let anxiety stop us from doing so much. And I'm talking to myself now. There's so much stuff we let anxiety stop us from doing. We talk ourselves out of just mm-hmm. because we keep we keep thinking long distance and all we got to do is get through the next moment. Yeah. And, and, and that's why it, it's so important. And it's something that I'm working on is breaking like goals down. Because mm-hmm. if you have a long laundry list of things that you want to do and you know, uh, I'm in um, like a creative accountability um, group with some of my girlfriends mm-hmm. and Baron was like, hey, so what are y'all goals for like the next month or the next three months? So when you break them up like that, it doesn't seem she said, hey, I realized I hit those goals in like two and a half weeks mm-hmm. because that's what I, you know, when I put them in my planner, that's what I saw. And then I was just, and it just became like, I just started executing and it just became out of sight, out of mind to me. Mm-hmm. And you're really, it, it really is true. It's just like, okay, what can I get done today? Yeah. Whether it be, like I said, you got laundry, you try to meal prep. I'm about to get off the phone and make my lunch and stuff for the week. I have hello fresh. Mm-hmm. And some days I come home from work. I'm like, yo, I just want to chill. It's basketball. Like I'm, it's two games on. Mm-hmm. I want to watch them on. The next thing you know, it's like eight o'clock. And I was like, shoot, I didn't cook. I'm gonna just mm-hmm. order something. Mm-hmm. No, I don't spend no. So so yeah, it's literally y'all. Just today, even if it's just like I'm a shower, I'm a clean the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Just one day at a time. You don't owe the world that. And American culture has us so caught up in the rat race mm-hmm. that when I was just in Paris. Everything moves so slow. Eating. We were you could be at a restaurant for three hours. Mm-hmm. I'm like, when y'all gonna bring the check? Like we, we got stuff to do. You know, like they so you care. gotta eat. they don't care. <laughs> it's it's just slower pace. And I was saying, mm-hmm. like, we were so in the moment. I was like, dang, I gotta go back, I got a job. But see, that's the crazy part about this country. It's like we we have been sold this idea of productivity that's really not even realistic. It's like and, and it's, it's it's the industrial complex. I, I know that. I can say that yeah. safely. I don't want to be too deep today. But I mean, but it's <laughs> like they've made us to be cogs in this machine. And yeah. all. so now we have in our mind, work, work, work. All we here is to do is work. And like, no, we're here to live a whole complete life. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, we, you can't do that if all you think about is work and making something and doing something and, and accomplishing things for other people. It's, you have to think about what is going to satisfy your soul, what's going to leave you happy, that when you leave this earth, you're going to feel like, oh, I did something. And I um, like ultimately want to get like a place in, 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 in Paris or whatever, because like I, just, mm. I just love the vibe, you know, it's like so mm. much. I was just like, you know, I, at one point I felt like I was having like this tug of war with my job, but then once I figured out how to make my job work for me and not work mm-hmm. for it, mm-hmm. I was like, okay, cool. Cause I want this to be my last corporate job. You know, mm-hmm. I want to be able to build my candle on out, my podcast out. Um, a coworker actually just gave me the information for his, you know, acting coach. He was like, yeah, hit her up. Mm-hmm. And she got this book and she's like, she, people get picked all booked all the time like that's her technique uh all this stuff so you know being like talking to people being able to speak this is what i'm doing this is what i'm mm-hmm. also this is where i want to be and people like rocking with you on that is dope mm-hmm. you know um and it's just i this is where i'm supposed to be and, and, I, and, I, and I, I that's the best way to describe it this mm-hmm. is ultimately 
be where I'm supposed to be and things are falling into place for me that I know that it just reinforces that. So I'm like, all right, cool. But yeah, it's just, I'm, what, what is, what is the, 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 what do they say? I do not dream of labor. Mm-hmm. I've been saying that all the time. Right. What, what, what is that? Mm-hmm. I've been, listen, that, I, I love that it's dope that you are creating music. Make mm-hmm. sure anything you do, send to me. And, you know, we know people that create and all that stuff. So have y'all mm-hmm. build it, support each other. And mm-hmm. we will see y'all here next week.